Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Milkman Podcast. This is episode 53, and we're going to be talking about a few interesting topics, such as movies, video games, anime, music, and more. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce our other Milkman here tonight. As always, we have Joe. Well, we have Andy. Hello. And I'm here, Cody, a.k.a. the Milkman himself, and we're here to give you a fresh delivery of content. We are sadly short a uh, milkman here tonight. Uh, our buddy Josh is actually out doing a concert right now because he's a jerk. And he wants to leave Absolutely. us in the dirt. So, that's okay. We still love him. He hope he has fun and he's safe. Other fun stuff. I know he'll be able to talk with us next week about that, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, so, again, we still have two other dickheads here with us tonight. So, we're good. We have Joe and Andy. So, as usual, we're going to go around the room and say what's new with the week. Joe, you want to start us off? Oh, man, dude. I do know I've been getting a lot this week. What's that? Watching my daughter watch a great show. Or the show I watched growing up. Oh, yeah. What's that? Broccoli, celery, gotta be vegetables. <laughs> oh, my God. Vegetables are annoying. As annoying as it is now, I remember watching that. I'm like, damn, this was some bomb shit as a kid. <laughs> and seeing all the adult humor behind it, I was like, damn, in today's society, it really fucking fits. Like, they did an episode of Moses being as a baby being put into the river. Mm-hmm. In the house before they before they put the baby in the river. It says, congratulations. It's a, you see boy where it's scratched out and it says baby. <laughs> damn. You know how, how fucked up of humor that is <laughs> that Veggie Tales gave us. Man, I was like, oh my god, this would throw the wolf society down a fucking hole. <laughs> yeah, dude. Gotta cancel Veggie Tales. That's how you cancel Veggie Tales. Yeah, gotta like throw it. that fucking manner at them because Christianity supports it, and they're gonna be like, I know. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so Veggie Tales is a new thing for me that you've been enjoying yes. or watching. It's, it's a great song. Great song. Like, they do have Larry. some catchy songs, especially Larry the Cucumber. Yo, he has some oh, slappers. Where is my hairbrush? <laughs> that hairbrush turn was fucking, fucking fire, and he had no hair. Was... But the peach did. <laughs> yeah, right. What Larry was the, uh, <laughs> what was the one Bob saying? He always wore a cowboy hat. I don't know. I remember. Uh, it was a cowboy hat he was always wearing. It was like a western kind of thing. I don't know. They had so many good ones. But yeah, so. Anything else? Um, you were just aghast by all the manga you were reading. Yeah, because it's. Well, one just literally ended, dude. It literally just eight chapters ever. I was kind of disappointed. Like, it was going to be a great story. I'm like, oh my god, demons are on a church and they're trying to do good for God. I'm like, this is going to be lit. Nope. Nope. Main character kills the head demon, eats the soul, becomes a priest, and now he's hunting devils. That's not fair. That's completely fair. Wait, is this Veggie Tales? No. No. Yes, that's Veggie Tales. Yes. Yes, those Veggie Tales. <laughs> wow, they went on the new game here, you know what I mean? Stay relevant. Yeah, they got to stay with the times, brother. Facts. And then, uh, for the Jujutsu Kaisen spoiler, that was some bullshit. <laughs> oh, I hated it. I fucking absolutely hated it. No Gojo. Spoilers aren't right. always a, a, great, a great thing. Sometimes they're a miss. Gojo's not coming back. They're not gonna, there's one chapter left, and he wasn't in the most. He's not going to be in the one time out here. You will? Maybe they're, they're... No, yeah, you're probably right. It wasn't meant to be, babes. The only excuse they have is if Gojo, we see him in the reflection of someone else's eyes because he just wanted to be a normal child, not have these powers growing up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 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 That's the only sense I can make, and the only reason I say that, is because in the final chapter, it was in the spoilers, spoiler, <laughs> spoilers. It was dated, uh, s- stamped with the final chapter having a centered piece, uh, full color art. 
So I'm kind of like, oh boy, what's the art going to look like? But at the same time, I'm like, fuck you. You're not going to just show me some sign that he's there. <laughs> But that's it. That's it? Yeah, I've been playing Cult of the Lamb, too. How's that? It's fucking awesome, but so hard. It last time. Uh, it's so fun, but it's so goddamn hard. It's a nuisance that you, like, you, you, you gotta explore the dungeons to get new characters and loot and all the survival shit. And you come back to base, and apparently it's like three days fucking pass. All your animals are, all your all your cult members are just fucking dying, shitting themselves, sleeping in bed. So they're geniuses. Somehow, some way, you're over here shoveling shit in the corner, <laughs> like that ass. Like I, I don't, I can't tell you how much shit I've picked up in that game. There's an achievement for picking up so much shit. <laughs> and I'm laughing at it because I'm like, oh my god, look at all this poop. <laughs> You put it on the fertilizer, make these people eat their own shit. Is it multiplayer? Uh, only local multiplayer, not multi online player. Uh, local. Only local. Yep. Your nieces probably might like it because it is like the animals are cute. It's just you gotta take care of them. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they shit. would probably like it, but I don't know if my sister wants to play in that. I get you. Probably not. Alright, Andy, so what's... the Dress to Impress game. Dress to Impress game? Yeah, yeah. that's what they play on their uh, systems. Oh. Alrighty then. Alright, well, Sugar Tits, what's new with you, babes? Hit me with it. Alright, absolutely nothing. Absolutely fuck nothing, I don't believe you. And uh, I really didn't do much. Um, I actually started watching the new season of the Tulsa King, though, because that came out. Yeah, yeah, I was going to mention that to you. I forgot about that. I must start it up. Are they doing week-to-week -week episodes, or is it all released at once? Week-to-week. -week. There you go, so that's something that you can always come back to. Yeah, so I watched the first episode where he got out of prison. Again. <laughs> oh, yeah, again. So that's great. Hey, uh, well, I mean, is it, is it a good start to this, the season, or? Well, I like the new guy that they added. Uh, he he kind of looks like uh, me, but bigger. Yeah, of course he looks like you. Yeah, well, he's bigger. He's like seven foot two, and they call him Sasquatch. Oh, okay. He a big motherfucker. Big motherfucker. And that's like his security guard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he doesn't really need one. But that is his body guard. <laughs> Interference over here. Get over yourself. Interference. You're interference. You just lit that lighter. Yeah, now everyone knows. Yeah, fuck it up. Um, and that's really about it, honestly. I didn't, I didn't really watch anything else. Alright. You didn't play anything else? No, but I gotta dip out for a minute. All right, that works. Uh, so what about you, Kay? What's new for you? Yeah, what's new for me? Week? Yeah, pussy. Uh, uh, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, I saw the crow. Gay. I was really looking forward to it because I love Bill Skarsgård. It was trash. He's a great actor. It's not trash, but it wasn't like. It wasn't good. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. Hmm. It ain't winning shit this year. Well, no, well, I wasn't planning on winning shit anyway to begin with. My thing was, is I honestly didn't buy their love, their undying love for one another. So, like, the way they met was just really awkward and weird anyway. They met in, like, this prison for, like, crazy people, I guess. 
she was like running from something that she had saw and she like got herself kidnapped because like some drugs fell out of her purse so like they just threw her in jail but like it was like a crazy jail where they were making you sound like you know you were insane or whatever yeah excuse me that was so refreshing um but yeah, and then the way they just met was just so super weird, and then like they they escaped together, but that it didn't feel like they just I don't know their whole love was just kind of yeah. So I did watch that. I'm glad. I'm so, I still enjoyed the, a lot of the action that they had in it, especially at the end where he was using his powers or whatever. It was pretty cool. Uh, I watched the first two episodes of Agatha all along. Uh, I only talk about the first one because Joe only watched the first one. Uh, but I did enjoy it for what it is. Uh, but I feel like we're only grasping the surface. I feel like it's just to get us in there and be like, hey, this is what this is going to be like. Da, da, da. This is what's truly going on. Yeah. So now, I feel like now, after this, I feel like it's going to pick up. Because now we're delving into the Witch's Road and all this other fun stuff. They got to get to their powers and they're going to be dealing with this and that and all that fun stuff in between. So I'm excited. Uh, I also took a shot and watched the Rick and Morty anime. anime. Terrible. Terrible, terrible decision. That was a terrible decision you made. I don't know why they made that. What it, a grab. It just, uh, it, it, grab. It's in, it doesn't work, man. No, it didn't. I feel it like they're going to cancel garbage. it after this season, which I'm kind of glad, but kind of sad because then it's just doing the, like they're trying to, uh, what you call it? Oh, yes, yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. That's crazy. Um, but they're dwindling the, the IP, like they're making it less of a better thing like people were craving this shit and they're even talking about releasing some news or a trailer or a teaser or something like that for season eight soon so that has me really fucking excited um i also i don't have that there uh i also saw speak no evil okay this uh past weekend too how was it really fucking good dude James McAvoy steals the fucking show the entire way. I bet. He's the bad guy, isn't he? So, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah. But dude, dude, first of all, he's jacked more in this than he was in Split. And then the, uh, the glass one. He was like stupid ripped in this one, dude. He's big. Like, bulky big. And then he... Had a great performance throughout the whole thing, I feel. Uh, and then the ending caught me really off guard, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like this, it was insane the way it ended. So, I was really peak on that. Uh, what else? And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Didn't really do too much else. Uh, playing a lot of Fortnite. Gay? Not gay, but some, somewhat gay. Uh, I have been playing more of Harry Potter Quidditch. Yeah, it's, going? It's, it's going pretty good. I'm feeling better with it now. Yeah, I've learned some tricks, but there's some players that are fucking sweaty little dickheads, like sweaty little fucks. Uh, you have to rebind some controls, I feel. Because some of the stuff that they just, like, automatically sweep your all default setting, which is not it, dude. You're at your fucking... First of all, your sensitivity is all the way up right at the start of the game, so that's fucked. Um, so I had to have that completely lowered, because then while you're flying, you don't want to fucking be... Looking around like a fucking bat out of hell. No, it wouldn't be like a bat out of hell. Not, then you ain't looking at nothing but fucking. <coughs> what you call it? 
<coughs> Don't do shit. No, I'm good. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, no, that shit's fucked. I believe it. I believe it. Trust me, I do. So I think I play. I play Overwatch with basic uh, default sensitivity and everything. So it's fucking kind of. <laughs> Can you see how well I'm doing? Yeah. yeah. All right. So some of the topics I have lined up for us. Uh, the next live action Transformers is guaranteed to be the crossover movie with GI Joe. And the producer recently confirmed that in an interview with Collider, he did state, instead of them reacting to humans or reacting to the human plot, what is their drive? And they, so he also goes to say that it has to be a part of that story now. So they basically want to take it away from the human aspect of the movie and be like, all right, they the Transformers themselves also have to have a drive. Yeah, no, they, I saw they, they, they uh, saw Star that they, Screen. Right? Star Screen? Star Screen? The jet with his fucking name. Starscream. Yeah. Yeah, he's the villain, isn't he? Because there was... Dude, don't tell me he isn't. I swear to God, I saw a video of him forcing Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee, and what's her name, all like kneeling to him. Swear to fucking God. Where? TikTok. For what? Transformers. Which one? The newest one coming out. Transformers 1? Yes. Probably fake. Because Megatron, you know, is... Become, well, Orion Pax is becoming Megatron. You know, like, you know that, right? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Or whatever fucking Animation looked like pleasing me. I was like, no fucking way. No, because <laughs> the story is about Megatron and Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime becoming more enemies. Mm. But this, that has nothing to do with the, this Transformers movie. Because this one's going to be a live action one. Like, 100%. It's gonna have. It's funny because Chris Hemsworth, who voices Optimus Prime in the movie, is gonna be in this live action GI Joe movie with Optimus Prime in the movie. It's a little bit weird, I think. Personally, I mean, just because he just voiced Optimus Prime, and he's gonna be chilling with Optimus Prime. So cool, I guess. Uh, what do you think, Joe? Okay, Live action G.I. Joe and Transformers. You get to see, like, Snake Eyes and Bumblebee and Roadblock and... That'd be cool. It has to be done right. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, hopefully they're all, you know, pretty cool characters and hopefully it is done right. And I feel like this is going to be their way of trying to save the franchise, I guess. On both ends. Because this could reignite G.I. Joe. You know. As a whole. Uh, it could bring them back to, to light. I know Paramount was really. Trying to do some. Some things right now. And I know they're also going through their being bought. And everything like that. So I don't know what the whole ordeal is with that either. But. Hmm. Yeah so. Uh, next up, Nintendo of America and the Pokemon Company have filed a lawsuit against the developers of Power World, alleging that the studio has infringed multiple patent rights, quote unquote. Uh, Nintendo LTD, together with uh, Pokemon Company, filed a patent lawsuit in Tokyo District Court against po uh, Pocket Pair, Inc. on September 18th, 2024. Uh, that was in a statement on the actual uh, Nintendo website. So they had all stated what why they're doing it and what they feel like they need to get out of it. Uh, but Pocket Bear has not released an official statement as of yet. So we, I know that we've played Power World and we know that there's always been talk of getting sued or filing lawsuits before and I know that they did have one before previously if I'm not mistaken and they still lost um I know you your particular thoughts on this show is this is a stupid thing through and through and they're obviously gonna lose again because you know they're not Pokemon obviously 
It's this just pretty how. Cl- clear as day. And I'm 100% with you. Um, the they're, they're just more so complaining about the likeness, just as of. Because you can obviously tell the similarities that they're all, that, and there quite are a lot. Um, I even have a list here. If you give me a second. Um, but would you mind telling me more of your thoughts again uh, for the podcast for the people? Uh, I it's it's just gonna be lost cause for Pokemon, dude. Like, there's no, I don't see a similarity. They're two you know, totally different type of Pokemon. One's literally a what? Ground type, and I think the other one's a fighting psychic type. I can't remember what Ricardo is. I can't remember for my fucking life right now. You know, my favorite says shine is gold and black when he's shiny. But, uh, there's just, I understand there's, yes, they look similar, but at the same time, Pokemon don't wield machine guns. And Pokemon aren't slaves to you to force them to go chop wood and get fucking rocks and all this other shit. No, but see, they're just, they're they're not concerned of what they're doing. It's about just the fact that they look look alike. like them. Yeah, I get that. That's the only issue. But there's no look alike. Yes, there are. So here's the list of some, just some, of that are relatively actually kind of similar. The fighting top steel, one fighting steel type. Lucario is a fighting steel. It doesn't matter what type they are, it's the similarities of what they look like. Like they're a- actual characteristics. And it's Lucario versus Anubis, which looks like this. Sorry for your viewers, but they don't look exactly the same, but the idea is there. The color scheme is also there. Then you have uh, Claude Zire versus Doomud, which is a stupid fucking mud-looking motherfucker. Doesn't look exactly the same, but has a general idea. Then you have... Uh, Dedukai, the third evolution of a Rowlet. Looks like Robin Quill. Again, not exactly alike, but the color scheme is almost there. Yeah, but that's the thing though, it's, since it's not alike. But it's 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 too close. That's that's what they're trying to get. And then you have some that are like this. You have Luxray versus Boltmane. Granted, we get it. One's fire, one's electric, so they're both not the same. And we've seen an issue like that with like Eevee. She has multiple evolutions that are different variants and types and all that fun stuff. So why can't another Pokemon? But it's it's obviously a line, but it looks like a Luxray. Then you have the main one that obviously took took to Swarm when it first even had its first picture that was released. And that was Electabuzz versus Grizzbolt, which is the Pokemon that you first see on the front of the, of the game for the icon. That was the first one people really assumed and went right for. Just because it's an electric type. Um, we have Zebstrika, uh, the zebra type unicorn, versus Unibolt. Not the same, but the concept of an electric type horse is there. That's where they're coming from. Um, and the horns are kind of similar. You have a Wooloo versus a Lamball, and you could honestly kind of just say a sheep can look like a sheep. That one, I would argue, is very hard to fight over, because it's a sheep. A sheep can look like anything, but a sheep is a sheep. It doesn't have to, it's a small little puffy ball of fur. It's the coincidence there is, is, is sublime. It's very weird. But those are the seven that I have. And that was off the list that I got off of comicbook.com. So there there are a lot of similar Power World pals out there. And there's probably some more that do have some similarities that we just haven't thought of or haven't been really com- uh, compared. But those are the seven that are like the highest ones I think that do resemble a lot of real Pokemon. Uh, again, the Wulu and the, the Lamb Ball, I could, I could argue that one, because a sheep can look like that. Any sheep looks like that. You just can't change. I don't know. I don't know how else to really... It's a sheep. It's a sheep. Kids look at it. Oh, sheep. 
Uh, so yeah, I hope that everyone gets justified uh, in, a, in a sense in this lawsuit. Um, I hope that Power World still is able to continue, which I honestly think they will. I don't think anything bad is going to come of this. Um, I just I hope that everyone gets their their ends meets, and you know no one gets in any serious trouble, and everyone's games can continue on because I know Power World has definitely found like a really cult following since it's released. Uh, I know I haven't played it a lot personally, but I know a lot of people that still do. I know you do still play it. I know Andy still plays it. Andy played it last night, I think. Yeah, so it's like, I know that people still really relatively play this game. Um, I just hope, you know, everyone gets their come up. It's, I mean, I know I can't, I can't say any less for Pokemon. I know Pokemon just fucking, they win everything. So they have billions and trillions of dollars. They can't shy away from a, an indie game such as Power World that... And it's, it's... It might come down to like a monopoly state, honestly. I feel like this is what Pokemon's gonna turn themselves into to the point that they're a monopoly. Maybe. I would be really ass. My personal opinion. Yeah. Alright, so... Next up, Netflix live action One Piece. Finally cast two more important characters with Joe Magnagold or I always say his name wrong. Man Geni Man Elio. I don't know how to say his name, sorry. As the warlord of the sea and main villain of the Alabasta Arc Crocodile. And Lyra Abova as Nico Robin, future Straw Hat Pirate. What do you think, my good sir? What one piece? Yeah, they're they're getting more season casting two. in there. Season two. I saw the video of the behind the stage and they had to blur out all their fucking season two shit. Yeah, man. So I'm like, hmm, hmm, I wonder who it is. <laughs> so listen, you've seen Cobra Kai, right? Yes. You know the main guy. I've seen season one, okay, well the main kid Miguel. Yeah. He's gotten a lot older. And he has been in a lot better stuff, where his acting is a lot better. Uh, he was in, he was the new Blue Beetle, uh, in the new movie. And I love that movie. It was a great movie. Uh, and I was all for him playing Blue Beetle, dude. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It was a trash movie. It's a good movie. I know. Like the suit is amazing. The the, the, the family the dynamic is great. Movie. Either way, I digress. Um, <clears throat> he has shown his way into coming into more acting. His name is uh, Sholo Men uh, Menezuela. Menezuela. Sorry if I butchered that. Probably. <coughs> uh, but he is also good friends with a guy who plays Luffy and Naki Goody on the One Piece on the live action show. They're really close buddy buddies on set. And they also did a promo for the Netflix Geek End thing that's going on. And they did like a behind the scenes set of Cobra Kai, the new final season or whatever. And they did like this whole team up thing. And it was really cool. But they also are like fan casting Sholo to play Ace. Because obviously they look so good together. They look amazing. No, it's no, peak. No, people are going to be so disappointed. But you don't understand. I'm already disappointed because Ace is my favorite character. And I know what happens. And he's the reason why I stopped watching One Piece. It's literally the reason I stopped. Because they killed him. And he's peak, bro. He's he peak. Was. I know. <laughs> he is so great, dude. And they yeah, had to kill great. him like that? that too great. so early, dude. That was great. Natsu would be his ass, dude. No. Yes. No. He eats fire with Ace. I don't Ace. give a shit. Natsu would literally destroy Ace. He has too much fire. That's the problem. No, Natsu can eat all fire. Mm -hmm. Too much fire. No, there's no such thing as too much fire. Too He's much a fire-breathing fire dragon. He can eat as much fire as he pleases. Okay. And then retaliate it and then eat and again. Ace. <laughs> Ace is just a little no. fire, boy. No, he, he, there's a limit. Yes, there is. There's proof. 
Yes, there is. There is no proof. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Know. There is a limit to it. And you want to know what's worse? If he would have still been alive, he probably would have been, if not, more powerful than Luffy right now. Now he'd be dead. <laughs> now you're probably right. He probably would have died later on. I really wish he would have fucking died later on, at least. He died way too early. For how long it's been on? Yeah. Way too Especially early. Especially the new fucking person, the new god. This new person that showed up. Supposedly had the, uh... I'm going to really watch it. Her devil crew is controlling water, and she's a reason why the devil crew would have a hard time swimming. Mm. That's sick. Because she can, since she can control water, she can make it work for a person. For her person, yeah. Okay, so if she were to change it, or if she were to die, it would go to the way that they could all swim. Really? Oh, shit. Wow. That's theory right That's now. deep. That's what I saw. I was like, oh, man, that's fucking sick. Yeah, that's like, actually this fucking is controlling insane. the ocean. <laughs> that's a insane power to have, though, too. For real, for real. One piece is at the bottom of the ocean. Um, but yeah, no, that the reason I stopped originally watching One Piece was that they killed Ace. But again, seeing them, the way they were fighting, it looked just like, oh my god, I could see it. I could see them both being... Ace and Luffy. So, I'm all for it if that's what happens. Uh, but I assume that they're going to have to cast Ace soon because he does come in Alabasta. So, it's not like, you know, we're not going to see him. He's going to be around eventually. Just a matter of when, my dude. So, on that note, there was a movie trailer that came out this week that I'm super excited for, and it's my most anticipated movie of 2025. And <clears throat> it's Mickey 17. That movie looks fucking amazing. It is about a, uh, well, it's, first of all, it's based on a book. Well, let me look up some of this stuff, I guess. Uh, I should have said that before. Did that before we, uh. Shabooped all that stuff. Yeah, so it's called, uh, it's adapted from Mickey 7 by Edward Ashton, uh, which follows the titular, uh, the titular Mickey, played by Robert Pattinson, who signed on as an expendable. Uh, to work on an ice planet. Hmm. Hmm. But the movie <clears throat> is being directed by Bong Joon-ho, who also directed Parasite, which was also an Academy Award winning movie. Like, Best Picture of the Year. So, like... Oof, and this cast is insane. It has Steven Yun in the uh in the movie too. Let me see what else. Uh Mark Ruffalo, Tony Collette. Uh let me see what we got in here. Well, like I said, Robert Pattinson plays Mickey seventeen. Basically, uh, like I said, he's expendable, so they make a clone of him. So, like, any time that he dies, they make another clone. Uh, but one day he comes back to his, his house or his, his, like, bunker or whatever, uh, and there's still another version of him still walking around. Oh, oh I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 the cloning thing. Yeah. I saw that trailer. It's and That was fucking insane. I was like, what? They literally just woke up and looked at each other. One with the run, and the other dude just started with, like fighting. Right. Like, really so then, like, yeah. So now they're trying to figure out what to do, trying to do this and that and the third. Then there's possibly even more of him, like around, maybe, and it's gonna be insane. So it's gonna be Robert Pattinson playing a bunch of different versions of one guy. It's gonna be amazing. It's looks, gonna be looks great. Looks decent. Looks decent. Reminds me of Matrix a little bit. Uh, so that comes out early January, or mid-January of 2025. So that comes out soon. Ish. <laughs> it's soon. <laughs> I said soon, but it's not. No, winter flies, dude. Winter flies like quick. Oh, sure does. Um, next up, uh, Watchdog. 
movie uh, has finished wrapped filming the other day. But after years of being in development hell, quote unquote, since 2015, is this another Borderlands situation? Borderlands was in development hell as well for since 2009. That's a long time. This is almost 10. It'll be 10 years by the time this movie needs to come out that it was in development. True. And now I'm not sure if they're basing it off the game per se or just in the world itself. Um, but I would be safe to assume that it'd be in that world. But because the only reason I would say it'd be in that world is because then in the second Watch Dogs and in the third one, it's all just about a bunch of people being able to interact. I know in the first one there was a main guy that was doing all the hacking and stuff, but yeah, they, they definitely broadened the horizons in the in the sequels, so I just assumed that maybe they would do it that way too. Uh we have hints to like the main guy, but yeah, is this is this something that you you personally think that should come around, Jeff? What? Watch Dogs. The movie. Uh, I love the first game. <clears throat> I didn't mind the second one. Third one was eh. I had the third one on disc and I got that for Christmas. I didn't mind it. It was good. It was I didn't play the third one yet. Yeah. So I played it for a little bit and then I thought. Uh, Legion, I think it was called. Yeah, One Shark Legion. It was in the UK. I heard yeah, it was good though. Yep. It was fun. It was definitely fun. fun. I don't know why I stopped. I'm probably going to watch. I'm going to watch all my yeah. shit. Maybe we need to stream that tonight. Fuck everybody else. We get home. It's almost goddamn 6 30. <laughs> yeah, time. Well, what time are you going to stay? I don't care. Unless you don't want to stream. Maybe, I don't know. I got off of the front long for that. Oh, yeah, fuck you. All right, well, next up, keep going. Uh, we have the solo leveling movie was announced uh, with season two in the works now and soon to be on the way this winter. Uh, they announced a movie that will actually be releasing before the anime. So the movie is to be a compilation of season one. There's also an early premiere for season two attached as well. So much like the anime movies before that we've seen, and such as Demon Slayer and Dragon Ball Super, but in reverse, they adapt the first season into a movie that is shortened, but given all the good and important highlights. So you're going to see his major fights, him getting all of his bonuses, and this and that, and the third, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but I, I also say that this would be good for people who haven't seen the anime and would ultimately like to give it a more college try, as you would say, um, as you wouldn't have to dedicate a whole eight hours of your time. Uh, plus with the added bomb bonus that you're going to get a huge sneak peek at what's to come with season two. Uh, so I feel like if you wanted to get somebody into it, this would be the way. Uh, I know it'll eventually it'll be on Crunchyroll. And that also is nice because then, again, that's a, a better way to look at it for someone that you're just trying to get someone into the anime and not have to force someone to throw down a whole bunch of exposition they don't need to see. Uh, like, my one thing I, I was the chick that he saved. She wasn't really useful or use like at all, I guess, or around. Or is that just me? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, but I can't remember her face. It was the redheaded chick. Which one again? It's the one that he was going into the dungeon with, right? It was her. It was the first one that he went in with, remember? And it was him, the old guy. Her and like a couple other people that survived. Yeah, what what is it? Solo leveling. There's a movie with. Uh, see, I hate the movie idea about this. I hate the first 
what, 35, 40 minutes of the team will fucking recap the season one in the last 20, 25, 30 minutes. And like, it might even be a little bit more than that. I'm saying it might even be like 15 minutes worth of like new stuff. The way they ended season one was perfect. They should have waited and just gone into season two without doing this because they could have moved to a bigger scene like when he gets the ogres. Mm. Or orcs, whatever they're fucking called. I can't remember what they're fucking called. Big fucking dudes. They're mages. What if they do something like they're doing with Demon Slayer? Where he's a fucking dragon. Uh, what if they're gonna wait until the last bits and then they're gonna make that? No, because Demon Slayer still hasn't been made The train movie. That one started as a movie, but then they made it into the show. That's what I'm saying. They did it, but in reverse. But I'm saying that part they're... The, it's part of the book. But they're doing the last... three bits of the show into three movies. Yeah, I know that. I know that. That's what I'm saying. Like, Do you think they're gonna, they could do something like that with Solo Level 1 too? No. No. This is something that's probably like arcs or movies. Okay. Well, this will be more of a compilation, though, which would be nice. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna tell it tale for tale. You know what I mean? Tick for tat. Yeah. Um. I'll see about it when it comes out. All right. We'll see what happens. Uh, next up, uh, I have four potential PlayStation franchises that Sony could revive. So last week, I know we talked about Sony uh, complaining about how they don't have any franchises and how it was really important for them to bring back certain ones. Uh, I have a, th- like I guess I have four potential ones that definitely could bring some, some rogue swingers back, uh, especially with the console they have now and especially with the PS5. Pro, which they're trying to promote, which they also just announced the 30th anniversary edition of the PS5 and the PS5 Pro, which look awesome. Uh, but they're like a classic PlayStation 1 gray color, and it's a PS5 edition, and it, they look cool. They look sick. Expensive as shit, though, but dope. Um, so the... <coughs> So I go on to say here with the recent release of Astro Bot for uh, Sony's PS5 has been gathering a cult following after its release, but not for its thrilling gameplay, oh no no, but for all the Easter eggs the game has to offer, bringing back characters and properties of the past three decades. Um, so again, here's a top four list here that I feel like would definitely thrive, especially in today's day. Um, number one is Sly Cooper, arguably one of the most notable mascots for the PS2. Bro, I love Sly Cooper. Uh, when the series began in 20, uh, no, 2002 and received four installments uh, afterwards, but the last installment was on the PS3 and was released back in 2013. Uh, so there, there is a, there's a cult following behind this, I am sure. Um, I personally didn't play... But I'm a small, very big variety of playing mainstay games, and you love Sly Cooper, I promise you. I I feel like I know I would, had I would have, you know. I have a hippo, a short frog, and a and a turtle, a turtle, right? Yeah, a turtle. So it's hard for me to frog. And there's another one, oh, funny, I think. No, that was Star Fox as well. Yeah, I think it was just those three. Blue, pink, and green. And then I was obviously the female. Jason, Team, Sly. Definitely a fun game. Definitely a little bit of part of the challenge, but it's always a fun game. Yeah, Sly Cooper and the Thieves Raccoons. Sly 2, Band of Thieves. Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves. And that was the last one. So, yeah, these uh, these games were a great statement. And like I said, the last one was a PS3. 
So to think that it hasn't even been on a PS4, which they were trying to push as being... I mean, all all consoles are always trying to push to be the next biggest console. Um, but to not have one on a PS4, being as it was uh, a mainstay character for the PlayStation. And they even had it on like PlayStation All-Stars and such like that. So like he was a, a very high character. And like I said, he was also an Easter egg in Astrobot. So it's hard to see that they shouldn't bring that. And I hope they do bring it uh, to uh, light sooner rather than later. Um, next up, I have Resistance. Uh, a product of PS3 era was one of the big, uh, big focuses of Insomniac Games from 2006 to 2011. It did see three main entry titles and had two handheld spin-offs for the PSP and PS Vita uh, that last launched on 2012, uh, or in 2012. Um, I personally, again, another game that I didn't play, um, but I know there was a lot of people that played them religiously. Uh, let me look up some Resistance stuff here really quick. Yeah, it's a first-person shooter and a third-person shooter that was developed by Insomniac Games, and it is a Sony, you know, uh, property. So it's not something they should definitely be bringing back. Their yeah, their latest release was May 29th, two thousand and twelve. Resistance: Burning Skies, which was a PS Vita spinoff. Uh, yeah. Uh, it says the alternate history of Resistance series diverges from current history, primarily at the end of World War One, leading to the formation of a European trade organization and a peacekeeping allegiance in worldwide peace, preventing the Great Depression, the rise of Nazi Germany in World War Two, but also leading to Franklin Delano Roosevelt losing the 1940 presidential election to Montana Senator Noah. Oh, to Montana, or Montana Senator Noah Grace, who leads the U.S. into a semi-totalitarian isolation state, as well as the rise of an isolation Russian empire. That's before his abdication. Nicholas II appointed his youngest brother, Grand Duke Mikhail, as Tsar, who crushed the Russian Revolution. Ooh. That was a fucking mouthful. It's basically you're just fighting a bunch of Nazis. Hmm. What game is this? <clears throat> what Resistance. Is this? Resistance? Yeah. Uh, for PlayStation 2. Oh, or 3. 3. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't have a PS3. I only had a PS2. I had a PS3, but... Only for GTA 5. I have a 360 on PS3 though. Oh, it's a. Uh... It's to envision an alternate history based on the premise that an alien scourge obliterated Earth in the 1950s. The first-person shooter franchise is best known for the menacing Chimera. Humans converted into various forms of hideous aliens in an arsenal of upgradable next-generation weapons. Is that a fucking train? Yes, the... Yeah. It's a couple two. Uh, an arsenal of upgradable next-generation weapons combining human and Chimerian technology. The trilogy story takes place in England and America and follows the journeys of Sergeant Nathan Hale and the disgraced former Lieutenant Joseph Capelli as they attempt to save the what's left of humanity. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that's a game uh, that people were all about. Um, 
And truth be told, uh, you know, it sounds like a fun game. And if that's definitely something that people were, you know, definitely all about, then I feel like You know, they should bring it back for sure. Uh, number three is uh, Infamous, another IP that was of the PS3 era. Also from the same creators of Sly Cooper, Sucker Punch. Uh, they started working on the new project in 2009 and was followed by a sequel in 2011. Uh, and a soft reboot in 2014 and a small spinoff thereafter. Um, since then, there has been no uh, serious movement on the IP. Uh, I played Infamous uh, and Infamous 2 a lot, uh, especially when they were they were just hammering that fucking thing out. Like it was nothing like that. It was like one of the best games that they had made. Uh, I especially think I played the second one more because you got to choose. It was worse to be the bad guy, like when you like chose to be the good guy versus being the bad guy. Yeah, and then they bother. also had the uh, the Dracula. DLC that was pretty cool. The the, the vampire <gasps> one. That was what? Cool for it was a DLC for Infamous. Uh, I don't know if it, I don't I don't think it was called Bad Blood, but it was it was called something with blood. But you were like a vampire basically. It was really cool. Uh, but yeah, I think they should definitely bring that that franchise back. That would definitely. Uh, Help somebody on their on their road to franchise recovery. Uh, you think of that game that I showed you, that Black State game, the one where they literally say every door you walk oh, through yeah, yeah, yeah. is. Who's the who developed that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out, bitch. Uh, and then while you find that out, uh, Bloodborne is another one. Uh, it was, uh, it's a game that was on the PS4. It's not like an old, old game, but it was back, uh, released in 2015. Uh, though it does run on the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, it can't help but mention that the game would look vastly more incredible and run even faster than its predecessor. Uh, we can't help but wonder why, what could be considered by most, uh, by most from software's most popular game over that of Elden Ring, Dark Souls, and Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. And I, I also agree, but some say that if they're not working on Bloodborne, then they're probably working like on a remaster. They're probably working on a sequel. There's no release of a company with one state is worth only before PC. That's booty, but it's expected. Three hundred and five or some shit like that. I don't know. And it's probably not gonna. It's only gonna run. It's probably a short game though, too. It's probably not one of those long games. Mhm. Mm Especially because of how high quality it looks. You know what I mean? It probably will take like three hours to be sitting there. You know what I mean? And it probably costs like twenty bucks. Most likely. Probably go for like. 50 and then it's going to drop instantaneously for you later. Give or take. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, those are four franchises that Sony could definitely bring back to light. Uh, it'll be great. It'll be amazing. I hope that... Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that it uh, works out. Because, again, I feel like Sony does have a lot to offer. Uh... And I know that they even they even have more franchises than just the four that I aforementioned. It, it's just a, it it hurts and it irks my soul that you do that. But it's it's <laughs> oh my god, it's great. What? Oh. Did you get it? No, I don't know. I couldn't tell. I was trying to talk over it. Crisp like a brute. 
Yep. Strong like an ale. And he's still alive? No, he left, remember? Oh, he left? So I'll be right back. I'll go do something. Oh, man. Yeah. And we're about done. That was like forever ago. Yeah, I know. You know what else we're going to talk about? Diddy. <laughs> Why? He was caught with 400 plus dildos and a thousand miles of fucking baby oil in his house. That's disgusting. Fun facts from Joe. And he was arrested. <laughs> and he was caught in the park before he was arrested. That's... Yeah, I saw that. I saw a video of that online. Like how he was chilling out of the park or whatever. I said, why do you think his house looked like that? No, 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 no. It doesn't look like that exactly. But there, there were over a thousand bottles of lubricant found in his house. Yeah, but that could have been for a multitude of things. Here's Diddy. Could have had a bunch of ladies over. Had a bunch of orgies. I guess not. A lot of big booty bitches need a lot of oil. Two times. Don't want to get caught. <laughs> you don't want to get caught with that because there's more questions than answers for sure, my guy. Yes. For sure. Because then you're just like, you're definitely left more wondering, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know, good for him, I guess. Not really. <laughs> Not really. He's in a him. tight spot right now. That's an understatement. They're probably through the, through the ringer. Oh yeah, no, without a doubt. Um, I, I wish the well it. for my man, Diddy. The man, the man had a song called "Patiently Waiting." I hope everything works out for him in the end. I hope justice is done its due diligence. Um, politics. <laughs> politics. No, we need to talk about politics. But our government's in crisis condition. It is, but it's not my decision to talk about it because fuck politics. It is part of your decision. No, it's not. Yes, you are. You're an American citizen. I'm an American citizen, but don't give up. You have to, in some sense. It's your future. Mm. My future has already been down the drain. Mine too, but I'm still chugging along. Yeah, you're right, brother. Good times, good times. Uphill, brother. Only up. One way. One, one way or down. another. Only we'll way down is death. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you one way. Oh, no, is it? Got Anywho. nothing else to talk about? Like, you yeah. Anymore? No, I do. Uh, the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is coming out October 11th. And they're just finished announcing the rest of the roster. With the addition of announcing the final character, they also announced characters from older Z films that were direct to VHS or DVD. Which brings the total count to 182 characters to Holy be playable at the start of the release. And they also announced a mystery character that was going to be a part of the pre-order releases, Goku Mini, from the upcoming Dragon Ball Dime show. Pretty dope. I'm getting this game, 100%. That's all gameplay of it looks pretty good. It looks fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Watching that dude you coming from a cloud of smoke hidden in the shadow. I was like, oh my they god, that hurt. They released a video today, which is what was covering the rest of the characters that they were going to release. I don't give a fuck about characters. I give a fuck about Well, no, because like that. this is part of the video. Um, what they're also doing is they're allowing you to be able to edit, like, Things in the like in the game to make it look like cinematically like it would like you would, would want it to like it was an beautiful. anime dude. It was beautiful. Like you can make people do have like certain expressions and like have certain fighting poses. You can have people charging their key. Like there was a whole thing where they were doing it with a a whole Frieza and Goku moment when he was turning Super Saiyan, and they made it look like it was a whole scene from like the game, and it looked really cool. Basically. They went into really high detail of this game, which is what makes me even want to buy it more. Because this game is the Dragon Ball of games to get. Like, if there wasn't any other game out there, it's this one to get for Dragon Ball. It's this one. And my friend, you will be able to play it. Because we game share. Because I'm, I'm buying it for my PS5. I'm getting the, the PlayStation game that's the... Uh... Bioshock spinoff off fucking series with Chicken Space. I forget what it's called or something, but it was WS or some shit like that. No idea what you're talking about. It's like a Bioshock 
type game you're in space with powers that you gotta inject it from the same people mm. Light, uh, lighthouse i think is what it's called i can't remember i have to check it out uh i'm also getting the ultimate edition like the highest one the 109 dollar one to get all that pre-order i'm getting everything there's so much shit to get with it it's amazing like it's worth $100. it's worth the hundred dollars dude it's worth it I almost went out of my way to buy the collector's edition, which would have been another hundred and twenty dollars. But I would have, been, dude. I rather I just want the game, and you get to play it three days early. Oh, all right, that's that's better for the uh, digital at least. For the digital, yeah. yeah. So that'll be a great time. Get a head start. October seventh, getting the handle on all these other characters that have never been in a Dragon yeah. Ball game period yeah. that you can continue to play. Like I said, they have these direct to DVD and VHS characters that are coming out. Like they had fucking what was the one that I was fucking hyped about? Fucking they had cooler, fucking metal cooler. They had fucking Gen uh fucking what was his name? Jenna Bob, Jenna fucking Gemma Wob. Can you force? Yeah. They've been had them. Um They've been had them. Very yeah, good. they had Soldier Force though. Very good. Uh, fucking. They added Broly from the Z version. Broly's gonna be broken in this game. I hope. I hope. Like the Z version, I like know. the I original know. cartoon Z. I know. And then they had a Super Saiyan, and then Legendary Super Saiyan Broly Z version. They're all in there, and then they fucking add, dude. So many fucking characters in this game, dude. Then they were adding all these other uh. The one thing that I saw that was really cool was that in the campaign is that you can select one character to follow their point of view throughout the entire story of their point of view from their story. So you can go from Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, even all the way up to Future Trunks to Jiren, like literally. And you could follow Goku from literally from fighting Raditz all the way to the Tournament of Power. Which is the entirety of where we are right now in Dragon Ball. I mean, unless you brought the manga, which is a little bit ahead. I read up to the point of Black Frieza. That's where I'm at. I have Frieza. Sounds tough. But I was, I was off. I fell off the train when they introduced Gold Frieza. I wasn't about that. No, Black Frieza. I wasn't about it because I just felt like, oh, so now they're giving him Super Saiyan God powers because Goku has Super Saiyan God, and I get it. I truly do. Frieza and Goku is literally the best anime fight known to man. Top, literally one of the top fights of all time. That's a hot take for me. I will die on that hill. That's pretty cool, actually. It's Black Frieza. So, like, I understand that, like, Frieza has to... Frieza and Goku going at it again and again. I, I'm cool with that. But now you brought this fool back to fight him, and then he was again in the Tournament of Power. Who? Frieza. Yeah. So what the fuck, man? He's an idiot. But he's already... Get idiot. rid of him! <laughs> he's already... Keep him away. I understand that he's... They're just... They're, they're over-dwindling it now. They're over-stimulating the, the product here. I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. Uh... But yeah, I'm excited for it. Again, it comes out October 11th, so if you guys haven't... You're going to add the God character. Like the God character. The little child. That's God. It's like the God of their universe, basically. Or the multiverse, whatever the fuck it is. What do you mean? The small child that little Goku shakes hands with and everyone was like, oh my fucking God. He talks oh yeah, I think he is. I'm telling you, everyone's playable in this thing. That I could show you a picture. I can look for it. Yeah, here's the whole fucking roster. Frieza Force Soldier, Kaba, Frost, Tapo, Kaba Super Saiyan, Kaba Super Saiyan 2, Broly Z, Broly Z Super Saiyan, Broly Z Super, or Legendary Super Saiyan, Cooler, Cooler, Final Form, Metal Cooler, Android 13, that's when I was fucking, 
I was freaking out about him. Oh, Jenebeb, or, yeah, Jeneba. Fuck him, dude, I hate him. Uh, but yeah, so, Android 13, Fusion Android 13, Super Garlic Jr., Dr. Willow, Lord Slug, Lord Slug in his giant form, Turtles was the one I was freaking out about, too. He's one that looks like Goku, but he's his brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's the other brother. Um, Bojack, Full Power Bojack was another one. Uh, Hybrid Degarn, I probably don't know that one. Uh, t- uh, Tapion, Janeba, Super Janeba, Super Gogeta from Z, and then Goku as a teen. This is what Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the list of just the ones that were announced today. Holy fuck. And that was the last 27. 182 characters. Yeah, damn. yeah, it says the roster is now complete. The game will have 182 characters, the most there has ever been in a Budokai Tenkai Chi game. Oh yeah, uh, it says in episode battle players will be able to relive some of the epic battles from the anime with eight different characters available. It was Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Jiren, Future Trunks, Goku Black, and Frieza. They will all have different lengths with Goku being the biggest with events starting from the Saiyan invasion on Earth up to the, the Tournament of Power in Dragon Ball Super. So if you want to literally play the entire Dragon Ball storyline, play Goku. Through and through. Because he was there through and through. There's no other option to get the fucking story complete. I'm going to be busy as fuck. Playing Goku? Playing all of them. Because then, like, even Vegeta is just almost as long. True. Each story is different. But it could even start, like, like, I'd say, like, the shortest ones would probably, like, future, tr- like, the farther you go down the line, the shorter it's going to be. So, like, Jiren obviously would be the shortest because he was the last. He was at the end of Tournament of Power. But then, like, Future Chunks wouldn't be that long because he was, like, the Goku Black era. So, like, if you were to go to Goku Black, it would even be later than Future Trunks, but before Jiren. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, obviously, as you go down, it would... It would dwindle, but still. I'm still, again, super excited. The biggest Dragon Ball Z game of all time. I'm getting this motherfucking thing. It's for worth now, every For now, they'll have another event. one that'll be bigger. Maybe, but they, they put a lot of effort into this one. That means every, every time a new character comes, they have to put a DLC on this because it's a new character. Or yeah, uh, well, free. the one that I'm getting comes with the season pass, brother. There you go. Or, no, that might be different skins, brother. No, the season pass. Because it comes with fucking the Dragon Ball Super, the hero movie. It comes with those two fucking clowns that came with the androids, I guess they are. I don't know what they were. It comes with them, and then it comes with something else that came out too. I can't remember. But yeah, I'm excited either way, all the way around. So, uh, alright, Joe Babes, anything else? On your on your plate, you got for me. Mm. It's your new DreamWorks movies. Oh yeah, the Wild Robots coming up, and you said what was the other one? Spellbound. Spellbound. I did see something about Spellbound. Some but... people that made Shrek, Toy Story, Cars, uh, and a handful of other things. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that show. It's a Netflix movie. That's why. Yes. It's a family movie, and I'm excited for it. Not two moms, not two dads, but the mom and the dad. That sounds really exciting, though. I'm excited for the Wild Robot. That looks super good. Dude, that pocket, did you see the sneak peek trailer for it? No. I don't want to keep away from all the trailers now, because I see that they like the animals talk now. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's all I need to know. I know that she's going to have some interaction with the the animals that are around, and I understand that it's going to be a movie that takes place over time, too. So it's not like it's just gonna be a week in the woods. Like no, this is this robot's living in the woods for a solid a beat, and then like you know, I guess modern era comes around to try to fuck it all up, and that's just like one of the 
the forest, so like she has to try to protect everybody and be, you know, a mother figure in a sense. And then like I saw the duck thing. Yeah. Or like uh possum. What? It was a possum scene. Did you see the possum scene? No, I just saw a duck. You gotta see the possum scene, that's so fucking funny. I had six oh. kids now. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you, but oh yeah, it's because you're fucking. My speaker died. Or my speaker went out. You turned off. Speaker turned itself off. Yeah, it turns off after a short bit. Oh my god. What? We're so much louder now. Yeah. yeah. Andy. What you doing? Where you been? I just ate some dinner. You bitch! You were gone this whole time! I was ready to wrap it up! And you come back as we're wrapping up. Okay, well that's fine. No, uh, not really. Okay. You missed everything. You missed everything. I missed everything? Everything. We are literally about to end right now. Uh, womp womp. Womp womp. It's fine. Anyway. On to the next thing. No, there is no next thing. We just We're literally done. Literally yeah. done. No, on to the next thing, dude. <laughs> there is no next thing. <laughs> really, this the next is the closing. Thing. This is the closing. There's no next thing. Josh well, is going to love this story. talking about the next thing. Oh, gosh. This is great. You guys are great. I love you guys. I'm going to tell James. I'm going to tell you. Everybody about this, I'm gonna tell your mom about this. Like, her mom's gonna be so dinner. disappointed in you. He knew the podcast was happening, and he's ashamed of himself because he didn't want to even be on the mic. <laughs> we keep yeah, getting man. disturbances of. It's okay, I still love you, but at the same time, no. like, brother! <laughs> Street creds. Oh, look, there's an ambulance. Somewhere. Yeah, they keep going by all yeah. the fucking times. I'll wait for Cody's one. power to cut out, and that just be the end of the episode. No, it wouldn't be. My computer's so dumb. Oh, no, but. Andy would get. Cut yeah, out. That'd be the end. That'd be end to Andy. Be end to him real quick. Have a brown out right now. Oh. Uh, no, shut up, Andy. You don't deserve to make bird noises. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and on that note, as we sign off, I want to start by saying thank you for taking your time to listen to our nonsense and if you like what you hear make sure to like the video and if you find yourself coming back often subscribe and ring the bell so you know when we upload the next episode we also have twitch accounts which are linked in the bio for more of our crazy antics for you to enjoy and with that as always we have joe see you later we have andy and I'm Cody. Thank you guys so much. We hope you enjoyed this fresh delivery content. And we'll see you guys next time. Veggie